worthy to be praised. The father of the fatherless, the husband of the widow, our hope of glory, you are worthy to be praised. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. As we gather again to dine with you, Father, please, like never before upon your life. And then you may please be seated. As we open our Bibles to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus. Exodus chapter 12. The Yoruba is too loud, and the English is not loud enough for some people. Exodus 12. Verse 30 to 32. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as he have said. Also take your flocks and your herds, as he have said, and be gone, and bless me also. In Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 3, Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. God made a promise or a set of promises to Abraham. And part of the promises is that he said, I will bless you and you will become a blessing and through thy seed shall all the nations of the world be blessed. He also promised him that those who bless him will be blessed and those who curse him will be cursed. That's what God said to Abraham. In other words, God said that the friends of Abraham will be blessed and that the enemies of Abraham will be in trouble. Now, God began to fulfill his promises by blessing Abraham mightily. Genesis 24, verse 34 to 35. Genesis 24, 34 to 35. The servant of Abraham said, I am Abraham's servant. And God has blessed my master greatly. And then God continued fulfilling his promises by making sure he blessed Isaac even more than he blessed Abraham. Genesis 26, verse 12 to 14. Genesis 26, 12 to 14. The Bible says that Isaac became very great. His father was great. He, the son, was very great. 
And God continued. By the time we go to Jacob, in Genesis chapter 30, verse 43, Genesis 30, verse 43, the Bible said, Jacob became exceedingly great. Abraham was great. His son was very great. His grandson was exceedingly great. And God didn't stop there. He continued even to the great grandson. In the case of Joseph, according to Genesis 41 verse 44, Genesis 41 verse 44, the great grandson of Abraham became a ruler in a foreign land. He became the controller of Egypt. So everything seemed to be working in order according to the promises of God. But then, in Exodus chapter 1, verse 8 to 12, Exodus 1, 8 to 12, the table seemed to turn because a new king came in Egypt that didn't know Joseph. And then for 430 years, all the seed of Abraham found themselves in darkness. Pain, poverty, sorrow, hardship, everything continued like that for 430 years. According to Exodus chapter 12, verse 41. Exodus 12, 41. It was as if God has forgotten his promises. It was as if those who hate Israel now can prosper. Because Pharaoh now began to kill the children of Israel. When they are chapter 12, verse 29, Exodus 12, verse 29, when the tide turned, and the one who had been killing the sons of the children of Israel had all the firstborn in his entire nation killed in one night. In a single night, According to Exodus chapter 12, verse 36, Exodus 12, verse 36, the blessing that those who have been cursing Israel had gathered was transferred to the children of Israel in one night. And according to Exodus chapter 12, verse 32, Exodus 12, verse 32, from the very mouth of the one who had been tormenting the children of Israel came a request that to form the fulfillment of God's promises that through the children of Abraham all the earth shall be blessed. Pharaoh cried and said, bless me also. I'm believing God for every one of us who are here tonight, particularly those who can say things used to be better than they are now, that tonight the tide will turn for you. But the most important thing is that the tide that turned that night was not just for the parents, but for the children, particularly for the children. Because the children of a slave is a born slave. There was a time when things were getting tough 
for Pharaoh that he had said to Moses, you can go and worship God, but you must leave your children behind. What was he saying? He was saying, the parents are slaves, they are already getting old, they will soon become too old to be of use to me. Let the children stay. Let your future remain in bondage. You can go. But that night, when the Almighty God turned the tide, he said, go and take your children also. The tide that turned that night turned principally for the children. I'm believing God for all of us who are here tonight. Whatever we had suffered from tonight onward, none of our children will suffer the same. And for you to fully understand the importance of that night when the tide turned, you will need to read Numbers chapter 14, verse 28 to 31. Numbers 14, verse 28 to 31. You will see there that yes, the parents were set free that night. The parents left Egypt that night, but only the children entered into the promised land. Only the children, with the exception of just two parents. All the other parents died in the wilderness. The children entered into the promised land. Everybody came out. Parents and children. But it's one thing to come out of bondage. It's another thing to enter into the promised land. The children came out of bondage and entered into the promised land. So that night brought double blessing to the children. I'm believing God for all our children in the name that's above every other name you will reach your goals and it all started with a meal it's a meal that was taken at night by the following morning when darkness has given way to light Sorrow had ended. Joy had started. And the Bible says in Psalm 30 verse 5, Psalm 30 verse 5, and we'll be hearing more about this tomorrow, if the Lord tarries, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I believe God, and on the basis of his word, I'm decreeing tonight that for every one of us, our weeping will end tonight. And our joy will begin. And so before we come to this awesome table of the Lord, may I encourage those of you who are still sitting under the darkness called Satan, who are still living out of darkness and make you become partakers of the inheritance of saints in light. As we will learn more tomorrow, you will discover that there are two major forces in this world. 
darkness and light. It's my prayer that whatever may want to tie you down into darkness will release you tonight so you can come into the light of God. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ so that you can move out of darkness into light, come now so that we can pray together and from this moment onward you can say I am a light of God no matter how little the light may be and when light shines in darkness darkness will not be able to overcome it so if you want to give your life to Jesus I'm going to count from one to seven before I say seven make sure you are standing before me so I can pray for your salvation and then we can proceed with the important meal. I'm counting now. One. Two. You have to tell darkness to leave you alone. Pharaoh didn't want the children of Israel to go. You have to tell the devil, I'm not staying with you anymore. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want him to save my soul. I'm tired of darkness. I want to call me into the light of God. Three. Now, those of you who are already in front and those of you who are coming, talk to Jesus now. Ask him to have mercy on you. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to forgive all your sins. Talk to the Lord now. And the rest of us, please, let's pray for them. Let's intercede for these our brothers and sisters. Let's pray that God will lay his mighty hands of some. Father. Light from darkness of sickness to the light of health, from the darkness of weeping to the morning of joy, from the darkness of poverty to the light of prosperity. God just changed my darkness. To light that's what you will pray when they serve you the bread and then of course when we serve the wine we will tell you what will be our next prayer but please remember this meal is not an ordinary meal if you are not born again don't partake of it if you're a backslider if not return to the lord 
don't partake of it. If somebody offended you and you refuse to forgive, don't partake of it. It's a very powerful meal. It can bring healing and deliverance. It can also bring death if you eat it unworthily. Let's begin to thank God in advance before they serve you the bread. And when I give the go ahead, you will go ahead and eat and pray that the Almighty God will change your darkness to light. The Lord Jesus Christ, the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. As soon as he serves you, you can go and eat the bread and continue to pray that the Almighty God will change your darkness to light.
light of your love is shining in the midst of the dark is shining jesus the light of the world shine upon me search me thrill me by the truth you know Not yet been served bread, please shout hallelujah. If we have not been served wine, please shout hallelujah. Okay. Let's give those people one second or ten. There is power mighty in the blood. In the blood. Hallelujah. Ah, okay, thank you, pastors. You can go back to your seats. Healing mighty in the blood. There is healing in mighty.
represents our future. If all is well with our children, then our future will be glorious. When we drink the wine tonight, our prayer will be, Father, let my future be glorious. That will cover all your children. So please stand on your feet. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he has served, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit. Father, please let my future be glorious. Let my light shine brighter and brighter, brighter and brighter, brighter and brighter. Let my little lights now become mighty ones. Let my future be glorious. Let my future be glorious, Lord. Let my future be glorious. Thank you, Almighty. Let my future be glorious, Lord. Let my future be very, very glorious. Let my light shine brighter and brighter. My lights shine brighter and brighter. And my future be glorious, Daddy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Koremoko runde remoko shikete runde remaka katunde remoko shanta. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Almighty God will turn all your sorrows to joy. It will turn your darkness to light. And your future shall be glorious. Your light, no matter how little, will shine brighter and brighter. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Let's remain an attitude of worship as we sit down and pass our cups to the aisles. Take a special Thanksgiving offering to God for this wonderful meal that he himself arranged. <laughs> 